Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Had a question on the Enterprise DNA support forum recently that I wanted to dive into uh, with a video tutorial. And because I've, I've actually seen it asked a few times and the techniques used to solve it uh, are quite relevant for many different scenarios uh, or similar scenarios that you might be facing. Now, uh, one of the uh, members wanted to work out what was the current staff population. Okay, so how many staff do they have at any one time, at any one month? And you've got to think a, a little bit about how is the data set up here? And this is quite common with HR related data. You might have an employee in one line and then you might have when they started and when they left. Or if they haven't left, it will be blank. And then you'll have other details um, around that, that staff person as well. And so I worked through a bit of an example here. Um, I've done some HR and employment stuff before, employee stuff before, but I just broke it out in this particular forum post and showed how, how you can actually solve it. The big one is here, and I'll jump into the model in a second, is when we need to use inactive relationships and then a specific uh, events in progress type formula uh, that enables us to count um, count up things between dates on the same row in, the, in, in that particular table. Okay, so let's have a quick dive into the actual model here. Let's have a quick look at the data. It's a very, very simple setup um, just for demo purposes. So you see here that we have a staff reference number. So obviously you might have a lot more information here if this was sort of like your HR database, but we have when that person started and we have when that person ended or when they left and, if it, and it's blank if they haven't left at all. And if I go down here, you'll see, okay, this is when all the people left and we can we can sort that as well uh, a little bit differently. And so these are when all the people left. So we want to see in any particular, it could be any day, or it could be any month, right? Um, we want to see how many employees we have at any one time, okay? Now the key thing here, okay, is you want these inactive relationships. And I've gone over this a couple of times now, but if you have multiple dates inside your fact table here, this is what we would deem a fact table. We've got our lookup table um, up here, the dates table. If you have multiple dates like we have here on the same row or in, or we have multiple columns of dates there and you want to work out information between these dates or or with logic that needs to work through both of these dates at the same time you need these inactive relationships okay you're going to see in a second the formula we use in reality you don't even need these relationships funnily enough but you want it set up like this because say for instance you did ultimately want to do a calculation where you um, want to work out you know how many staff started on a, on a certain a certain month well then you would want to turn on say this relationship here you want to turn it on and you need it as an inactive one to do that okay so this is just just trust me on this this is the setup that you want when you're working with multiple dates Okay, and then so we want to, in this case, we want to see it in a month, um, month and year context. We could also, and I'll just, I'll just quickly work this up as well. You could also actually have this in a date context as well, and use exactly the same formula. That's how um, versatile this for, sort of formula technique is. Um, and I can um, turn this into a visualization as well. And you see, this is a more granular uh, level of detail than this month one I have above here. Okay, we'll go into the formula. And it's, it is great how it's so so reusable. Okay, so this is the, you, you might have heard of the events in progress pattern. This is a this is a this is basically a similar pattern, but just with some slight differences to it. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to think. Okay, what we, remember remember every result is calculated individually with DAX. Okay, and so we need to isolate a result here and work through the logic of what is actually going on for the singular result. Okay, so let's take May 2018. Now, we want to count up, we want to count up how many staff we have, right? And that's what this count rows is doing. It's counting the amount of staff that we have, it's, and one, uh, one, one staff member is represented by one row here. So we can be very comfortable that we just need to do count rows, right? Then we need to uh, work our way through, work up, work through some logic here in that particular staff population table, okay? And we're going to work through this part first. So we're going to, and this is what values does inside of filter, it iterates through every single row um, that we place inside here. So what we're going to do in for this particular result here in May, May 2018, we're going to first iterate through every single start date 
in the staff population table. So we're basically going to iterate through that entire table and look at what the start date is. If the start date, whilst we're iterating through it, is less than or equal to the max date, so the max date in this particular context is the last day of May, right? And so, um, you know, it's the, what is that? The 31st, the 31st of May, okay? So is if any of the start dates are less than or equal to the 31st of May in this context, then that's gonna to evaluate to true and we wanna retain that particular staff member, okay? So once we get to the end of all of that iterating, we're gonna have a list of start dates and um, consequently staff members who have a start date less than May 2018 or the last day of May 2018. Now, once we've got that list of people, we're gonna run some more logic here and that's what this particular filter is gonna do after that. We're gonna work through all of those start dates that were retained after this logic here, and we're gonna work through all of the end dates in those particular um, in those particular rows. And we're gonna say, is the end date greater than or equal to the min? So is, is it greater than the, the first of May? Okay? And if that evaluates to true, then we know that this customer still exists, right? They still exist at this particular time and we want to count them. Now I also added this other logic in here is because if, the, if, if that particular end date is blank, that means they're still employed, right? And so that also needs to evaluate, that, that as an alternative means that they are still an employee as well, right? So, um, so there's two conditions there. Uh, is, the, uh, is any of the end dates greater than or equal to the first of the month in any particular context and or is uh, the, the end date blank, because that means they're still employed, okay? And hopefully you can see now, once we work through this particular row and this, this particular logic, we're gonna have a list of customers, or a list of, um, yeah, a list of, it's not customers, sorry, a list of staff who still are employed at any one date, okay? And then all we do is we then count that remaining table after this logic is done because filter inside of calculate changes the context of the calculation right so basically with this logic here we've rebuilt a virtual table and then all we're going to do is then count up those staff that remain and then as we work through the list you can see here that the employees change over time so pretty cool logic right and and, and this is reusable as i mentioned so <clears throat> we can use this in a daily context as well and you can see here that it's a very similar shape, it just it's got a little bit more granular detail in it than say our monthly number here. Okay, so hopefully hopefully you've enjoyed going through this one. You can see here, um, you know why we need these inactive relationships as well because we need we don't want any context to alter the results that we're getting because we want to we we want to be iterating through every single customer uh, every single staff member first, and then once this logic's done, we then iterate through. The table that remains after that logic, and then and the work out. If we have if we have any um, context here via an active relationship, this would all be put out, and, and and the calculation would not be correct. Okay. Right. I think I might round things off there. Um, it's quite a quite a niche sort of topic here, but it's very relevant to many 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 situations. Okay. These multiple date scenarios. This is where everyone. I always. If you're starting out in Power BI. This is where everyone gets confused if they have these scenarios and they don't know how to manage these multiple dates, okay? And so hopefully by working through this, you have a better understanding of how to um, how to do that. Okay, thanks for listening in. If you if you like the content, got a lot out of it, um, certainly throw the video a like, really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of, lots of great um, content coming out to you very soon. Okay, take care.